In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to create these 3D cosmetics that you can add to any of your maps in UEFN. So now we need to actually find the models. If you already have some models, that's great. Just skip towards the end of the video, the portion where I show how to actually import it and then create it in UEFN. However, right now, I'm going to show you guys two different ways you can find and create 3D models for the cosmetics. So the first way to do so is to go on Sketchfab. Now for this video, I'm going to show you guys obviously how to create cosmetics. And as an example, I'm going to search for a crown, how to put a crown on a player's head. I'm simply just going to go in uh, the search bar and then look up crown. I'm going to scroll down until I find something I like. So this looks pretty good. It's like a gold crown with some red jewels on it. So what I can do here is just click download. And you want to make sure that it's FBX file or else you cannot import it into your island. So you're just going to simply click download. The second way you can create and find 3D models is through the 3dm.io website. This website is actually great for making UEFN 3D models because it allows you to create images and then with those images convert it into a 3D model. So I'm going to show you guys that quickly. So since we grabbed a crown from Sketchfab, what I'm going to do is create a crown in this software. So you can see here that I went to the Julian NXT and then I selected text to image. Once I do that, now what I'm just going to type is create a stylized crown with some red jewels. Then I'm going to click send. And now what it's going to say is that it's going to be generating your image and that it may take a few moments. So I'll be back once that's done. As you can see, it's finished up. You can click on the image and you can see what it has created. So you see it's created this nice gold crown with red jewels all over it. Now, if I want to make this into a 3D model, all I got to simply do is click generate 3D model. So I'm just going to click that. It's going to put it into here and I'm going to click send. Now, this will take a minute or so, but you just got to be patient. And once it's done, it will look great. One thing I like a lot about this website, 3DM, is how fast it is with creating the AI images and then also converting those images into the 3D models. I find that it's much faster than looking on Sketchfab for something specific because you can create it extremely fast. So after a couple minutes, it looks something exactly like the image we created, which is great because that image that we created looked phenomenal. Another thing that I forgot to show off is you can adjust the polygon count as well before you create the image. Obviously for this case, I don't really need a higher polygon count, but if you want it to look a little bit more detailed, you can put it as high as you want, but I would recommend 10 to 20,000. So since I like how this model looks, all I got to do to download it is click this down arrow here beside the save changes, click on it, and then I'm going to change the format from GLB to OBJ. And then I'm simply going to click export and then it's going to go into my download folder. Okay, so I just export it, but I also want to create a back bling to show you guys how to do that as well in UEFN. So I'm going to quickly create a back bling in here. I'm going to create like a night shield with a sword across it. So all I have to do is just go text to image and then I'll just do create a stylized night shield with a sword across it i'm going to send and see what it creates okay so it's just finished creating the image and once again this looks awesome there's a lion there's a sword across there's the shield everything i wanted so since i think this is perfect what i can do again is just click the generate 3d model and it'll create it but before i do that you can also see that when you before you create the image like you before you put the prompt in there's presets you can do so if you want to look photorealistic studio product shot cinematic whatever you just click one of these presets and then you click send and it will create it for you. But since I like how the shield looks, I'm simply just going to click the generate 3D model and see how it looks. So it's just finished creating the 3D model. And once again, I think this looks great. Just like the crown, you can see we created above. And, and as you can see, I've also created other models, which were other crowns and they look great. So since I think the shield looks good, once again, I can just click the down arrow format to OBJ and then click export. Now I'll show you guys how to quickly convert the OBJ to FBX in Blender. And then I'll show you guys how to import it into UEFN and set up all the Niagara effects to create the cosmetics. Okay. So once you have downloaded the model from 3DM, when you go into 
your downloads folder, what there will be, there will be a zip file and in it will be the OBJ file. So what you want to do is you want to drag it out into your main downloads folder. And then you might want to rename it because most likely will be like 3M and then like a bunch of numbers and digits. So I renamed mine. All you got to do is when you open up Blender to convert it to a FBX, click file, import, and then OBJ, and then just search for the file and click it and import it. So as you can see, I've just imported the shield and now to export it as a FBX so we can actually import it into UEFN. Just got to go to file up here at the top left, export, and then click FBX and then rename it to whatever you'd like. So I'm now in UEFN. What I'm going to do to import them, I'm going to come to the content drawer here and then I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it cosmetic assets. You can call it whatever you'd like for sake of the video. I'm just going to do this and I'm going to go into it. The first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to do the sketch fab crown real quick. Since it was already in FBX, all you got to do is click import and then select the FBX file and then also import the textures. So wherever they're located, whether it's in your downloads or just another folder that you saved it to, just click on them and it'll import into your content drawer. As you can see, I have now imported them into UEFN. And if this is a material instance, what you just want to do is quickly just create a normal material and then go into it. And then just to simply connect the textures, you've got to drag them in. The base will be the base color, obviously. The normal will be dragged into the normal and then the crown roughness will be dragged into the roughness. And then one thing you need to do for it to, for it to work in the Niagara when we create the, um, the cosmetics is you want to go in the search bar and look up just Naya and then select all of the Niagara assets. Because if you don't do this, then your model will appear completely blank with no actual textures. So now that that's done, I'm going to quickly go into the static mesh and make sure that I select the texture that I just created. And as you can see, we have imported the Sketchfab model. So now I'm going to show you guys how to do the 3DM. It's literally the exact same thing. So for the 3DM, I'm just going to create a new folder called 3DM Assets. I'm going to go into it. And now I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did at the Sketchfab one, but select the files, obviously, that I downloaded from Blender with that I created with 3DM. So I've just imported everything. And once again, it did not actually create a normal material. Material, you can name it whatever. Sake of the video, doesn't really matter. Then I just got to connect it. Base color will go to base color. The normal texture will go in the normal. And then the roughness will obviously go in the roughness. And once again, this is needed. You got to go to the search, Naya, and then select all of them. And then apply at the top left to save your changes. Then go back to your content drawer, open up the static mesh by double clicking it. And then select the mesh here and then click the arrow. And as you can see, we have just imported our 3DM crown into UEFN. Extremely simple and 3DM is easily the best website to use if you can't find something specific and you want to create something custom using AI. And like I said, it's really fast. And if you guys want to use it, there's a link down in the description. They currently have a 50% off sale for Christmas. So please make sure to go check that out and don't miss out on the 50% off sale that they're hosting right now. Okay, so I've also just imported the shields. And now what we can do is drag them out and just look at how everything looks in game. So obviously you can see the shield looks amazing. We'll look at the 3DM crown that we created as well. That looks insane as well. And then obviously we also have the Sketchfab crown that we downloaded as well. And obviously the crown is a bit bigger than the others and we will have to downsize it. So this is another thing that 3DM is really good at is that it actually creates the asset to the size of UEFN when you're creating cosmetics. Sketchfab, usually the sizes are usually too small or way too big. So 3DM is a great software to use for UEFN. So a good way to measure how it will look on the skin is simply just go into the content drawer and then we just wanna look up the character device. It will be the character device right here, this orange mannequin. We're going to drag them out and then as you can see, it is literally one of one scale of what players will be. So what we can do is we can see how it looks on the skin. So if we drag over the 3DM crown over here, you can obviously see that it's pretty big. So all we got to do is just downsize it to see what the size of the crown should be and how it will look on the player. So let me just drag this out real quick. So 
point 0.2 looks to be good. So we'll make them all point 0.2. We'll make all dimensions point 0.2 and then drag them down. So when we eventually make the crown in the Niagara where players can actually put it on, it will look exactly like this. So this actually looks great. So we're going to do the exact same thing for the shield. I'm just, I'm just going to bring the crown to the side. Obviously, the reason why we're doing this is because what it looks like right now is how it will look in the Niagara systems that we create. So when we import it in there, we'll have to downsize it to 0.2. So this is the best way to actually get the scale of how it will be on players. So now we're going to do the exact same thing for the back bling. I'm just going to rotate it 190 degrees and put it on the back and see if we need to adjust it at all. So as you can see, it is a little bit big. So honestly, I think like 0.6 should be good for it because we obviously don't want it to be too small because it is a back bling. So honestly, okay, maybe let's do 0.5, just make it a little bit slimmer. And yeah, this honestly looks perfect. When the player actually puts it on later on, which I'll show at the end of the video, it'll actually look great. Lastly, what I'm going to do is resize the size of the crown for the Sketchfab one. So obviously this one's big as well. So what I'm going to test first, let's just do 0.1 for all of it because usually Sketchfab is 10 times bigger. So I'm just going to do 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, sorry, and then drag it over and see if this actually fits on the character. So that honestly looks to be good. Maybe we just need to put it a little bit smaller. So maybe we do 0 0.08. That looks to be the good size. So we'll do it 0 0.08 all the way around. And as you can see, this is how it will look on the player. So it honestly looks pretty good. So now that we have the sizes of how it will look on the player, like I said, this is crucial. I'll show you guys how to now create the Niagara system for the cosmetics. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to right click in the content drawer, go to FX and then go to Niagara system. Then what we want to look for is the directional burst emitter. We're going to click create. And then this one will be, let's say it's the 3dm crown. So I'm going to do 3dm crown FX as the name Then I'm going to go into it. Then you'll see that there's this directional burst asset here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete sprite renderer, delete every single thing in particle update. I'm going to delete add velocity. And then in particle spawn, I'm going to look for static mesh location. Then on triangles, I'm going to click triangles and switch it to sockets. Next in render, we want to do mesh renderer. And then here you'll see meshes. We're going to click the down arrow. We're going to go into it, scroll down until we find our 3DM model, or you can just go to the content drawer. I'm going to go to 3DM assets, find the crown that we created. And then I'm simply just going to click the arrow here. And as you can see, the crown is now in the Niagara system. So as I said before, the reason why we got the size is so we can adjust it to the player. So since it's 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, what I can do is go back to that Niagara effect and I can change the size accordingly by clicking the down arrow and then rescaling it to 0.2 for every single dimension. Then I'm gonna compile, make sure that I save the changes. And then what I gotta do is code the content drawer, Fortnite, and then just look up VFX, scroll down and you'll find the VFX power up. You're gonna drag it out, bring it up. You wanna do infinite effect duration, respawn, Yes, but at zero seconds, ambient audio, no. And then under glow, you want to do custom effect for the base. Since the crown is on the head, what we're going to do is the head. And then we're going to look for the 3DM crown FX Niagara system that we created, put it in. I'm going to save it and I'm quickly going to launch the session and show you guys how it looks in game. So I actually made a quick mistake in the Niagara effects. You want to delete everything in particle spawn and then in particle update, you want to put the static mesh location and then change it from triangles to sockets. When I tested it in particle spawn, it wasn't actually following the player, but particle update, it does. So now I'm just going to compile and then I'm going to launch session and now show you guys how it looks in game. So I've now loaded up the game and to test to see if it works, you just got to run over it. And you can actually see that the crown is in the neck of my player. 
So this is actually pretty simple to fix. All you got to do is just simply go back to your UEFN, go into that Niagara device. I'm going to double click to go into it. And then since you can see that it was in the neck of the player, it needs to go a little bit higher up. So as you can see here, there's a scale rotation and pivot. What we're going to do since we need to go higher, I'm just going to scroll in a little bit more on the left is on the far right pivot. We just want to scroll up. So you can see that as I scroll up, the crown goes up. So I'd say it's probably around nine high that we need to go. So I'm just going to compile and then save the bottom right. And the one annoying thing about this is every time you fix the Niagara system, you do have to push changes, which depending on the size of your map may take anywhere from two to 10 minutes. But if your map is smaller like this one, it should only take a minute. But yeah, that's one of the downsides to having cosmetics. Okay, so the game's just started. So I'm going to go back in. As you can see, when I walk over it, the crown is in the right position. Obviously, on this skin, it looks better. But on other skins, it might not. So you might want to put it a little bit higher. But for the sake of the video, I'm not going to show that because it'll just take a little bit longer. All you got to do is just keep readjusting it. If you need to adjust it left, right, you can do that with the other pivots but yeah so now let's get into creating the shield real quick it's basically the exact same process but instead on this device you'll be changing it to the back so for this what you can do for the shield is just go back to your content drawer i'm gonna go on the cosmetics and then you can just right click and duplicate and then we'll call it the 3dm shield fx once it's created you can go in I'm just going to make sure that I reset all of the sizing and pivots because obviously it's going to be for a new thing. I'm going to go into 3DM assets, go into the shield, find the shield, put it onto the thing there. And then what I'm going to do is since we already have the size for it, I'm going to go over 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So what I can do is go back into it. Where is it? Right here. Change the size to 0.5 copy paste and bring all the scales to 0.5 compile save then what i can do is just copy and paste the vfx spawner bring it over change this to the 3dm shield and then change the custom to the center and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to start the game but if you want to have it where they can have a crown and a backling on at the same time in the devices you want to make sure that they have their different custom effect exclusivity index. So if this is zero and this is zero, then whenever you have a new one on, it will remove the other. But if this one's zero, and then we put this one to one, we can have both on at the same time. So I'm gonna quickly push changes and show you guys how it looks. Now that that's done, I'm gonna quickly walk over the shield and you can see that it looks like it's rotated the wrong way and it's in the middle of my skin's body. So what I can do for this once again, is just readjust it in the content browser. So what I can do is go back. I'm going to double click into where the shield is. Obviously, since it's the wrong way around, I'm going to find the correct rotation. So it's this far one and flip it 180. And then since it was in towards my skin, I'm going to find the pivot where it's moving backwards. So I'm going to look from the side and I'd say 8.5 looks about right and then we might need to bring it up slightly so i'm going to compile and see how it looks in game with these changes so the game has just started and i'm going to pick up the crown as well as the back bling and you can see that the back bling looks amazing on my character like i've mentioned many times throughout the video 3 dm is great because it removes a lot of friction around asset creation so you can publish your maps even faster so I hope you guys did enjoy today's tutorial. If you guys did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below on what tutorial you'd like to see next. And a reminder that 3DM is hosting a 50% off sale right now, so you don't want to miss that. Go down in the description and click the link to access 3DM. Hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll catch you on the next one.